What's up, YouTube? This year, Cameron, I'm back with another banger for y'all stories. Today, we got a video. I'm gonna give y'all some game. So, this is 10 things I wish I knew before I went to college. These 10 things, you gonna wanna write these down. If you don't have a notebook or a piece of paper or something, or even like the notes thing on your phone to type it, you need to write these down. Because if I had known all these things, I have a degree by now. <laughs> but I have my second degree by now. But anyways we finna get straight into it so these are in no particular order make sure you like comment and subscribe and let's get into it the first thing i have is apply for scholarships and grants i wish i would have taken it more seriously like i'm a huge procrastinator so i usually wait till last minute to do things and honestly scholarships and, and grants you can't wait till last minute like a lot of them have deadlines you have to start looking this stuff up like even people were telling me like oh start applying your senior year no <laughs> the end of junior year at the latest is when you need to start applying for these scholarships or at least looking for them so you know when the due dates are so by the time you find it it's not oh i got one more week to write you know this whole essay about why i want to go to school at blah 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 so Make sure that you look early for scholarships and grants, especially because this is free money. It's free money that you don't have to pay back. It's not a student loan. You got all this free money. Use it, bro. You can get scholarships for anything, for your race, your your height. I know you have some for certain like disabilities, for your grades, what school you're going to, like where you're from. There's a lot of different ones, especially if you're... um going to like some of the bigger schools they have even sometimes like little scholarship things in their website itself so you can find some for them too but yeah girl that's free money get that money baby number two don't buy the textbooks don't buy the textbooks listen you can rent most of these textbooks for a lot cheaper a lot of textbooks that i got i didn't even use like i really didn't even use <laughs> <laughs> like it was a waste of money and these textbooks cost hundreds of dollars some of the sites that you can rent them from so amazon prime netbooks that's k-n-e-t-b-o-o-k-s chegg with two g's and then e campus so make sure you look at these places first before you go buy the actual thing from your bookstore or whatever it'll save you hundreds of dollars even if you are using scholarships save your money baby go to tutoring slash office hours yo I had such a big ego and then coming through like all of my, I don't even know what it's called, but like primary school, so like elementary, middle school, high school, the whole time I never had to study for anything, like literally nothing. So for me to get to college and honestly I was lost from day one. <laughs> so I had my AA, um, I would say if possible, try to continue at the same school as you get your AA from because it's honestly a mess like they'll only take certain classes and then girl do your a do try to get your aa if you don't they'll only take certain classes at certain colleges and then sometimes it was literally just a waste of your time for you to take those classes so try to get your aa so you can still in the deal with at least the majority of them um but tutoring and office hours are essential especially if you don't know how to study because i had no clue how to study my ego was just too big and i was also partially too lazy to go to offer hours, I was nervous. Like, <laughs> this is my first time away from home and being in a bigger city, so I was blown. But if you can make it to the office hours, um, slash tutoring, so you can get it. Most of the time, it's free. Like, just find the time that fits in your schedule. Go ask any questions you have, and you'll be all set for the test. Get with an advisor regularly. Uh, I feel like first of all, you need to have certain things that you're looking for in an advisor because some advisors are not good advisors like the one i had in northwest florida she literally told me i could not graduate with my aa like literally told me i could not graduate with my aa and i had like two years and a little bit over two years to do so um but i never spoke to her again until i had to come back to have her sign my thing so i can graduate my aa <laughs> because she was a hot mess and i feel like honestly she left a bad taste in my mouth but all advisors aren't like that um and then by the time I got to UF, like I said, she has a bad taste in my mouth. So I wasn't trying to look for an advisor. But I'm like, oh, do you go to your advisor? No, because they're weird. But it depends on the school that you go to. So especially if you go to a for-profit school, they're very pushy about like, oh, you can take this class, this class, this class, this class. And most of the time, it's just a waste of your credit. So that was another thing um, with me going to UF is I feel like they were kind of 
wasting my time and trying to make me do extra classes that I didn't need to do. So I did end up going to an advisor. Um, but that was my perception of that advisor that I went to. I should have pursued and went and found a different one, but I met her and then I left it at that. But she was very pushy. Like I said, I graduated my AA. It was only supposed to take me like two more years to get out of UF, but it took way longer than that. And eventually I just stopped going. Um, but I feel like she was very pushy about taking all these extra classes that literally had no benefit to me. Like I didn't need at all, but just to fill my schedule. And yeah, that was a big turn off for me. So make sure you have discernment when you're choosing your, um, your advisor. If you're not happy with your advisor, even if they have assigned ones, you can always try to speak with them about getting a different one. You don't have to stick with the person that you got. You heard me. Use your voice. Because basically a lot of these is just use your voice. Don't be scared to speak out. Is this your first time away from home? You can take care of yourself, sweetie. Speak up. Number five. <laughs> Stand firm with your family. This is another one where you have to use your voice. I feel like I can't blame what happened entirely on my family because, again, I did not use my voice. But you know what's best for you. Especially if you're a first gen. Like, your parents do not understand. They do not understand the course load. They do not understand what's going on. They, they don't understand. So you can't expect them to understand when you say, I need a break or this class isn't making any sense. I'm not doing good in this class. You can't expect them to understand all of that because, again, they haven't been through it. And then that was that was my scenario in my case is I felt bad for trying to ask for a break, even though I've been taking classes for years, spring, summer, fall, spring, summer, fall, even before going to UF. And that was ultimately my downfall because I was scared to use my voice. I eventually just said, forget it. Um, and it wasn't because I wasn't intelligent. I got into UF. You know you have to be intelligent to go to UF. It was just that I I felt like I wasn't being heard when I, where I was trying to speak and eventually I just got fed up. But before you get to this point, speak to your people. Make sure they understand where you're at in your mental health space and make sure you're taking care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Okay. Next thing is get involved. I, again, I was very shy. I was very introverted. I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> If I did go somewhere, it was because somebody else made me go somewhere, but I was very introverted. I didn't go to a lot of the things, and I regret it. Like, I really wish I went out more. And not even necessarily, like, clubbing, but they have a lot of, like, um, clubs. <laughs> like, a lot of, like, um, like, key club and like all that stuff, like, volunteer work, all those type of things. They have those in college where you can still do that and still get out and still get... I know a lot of, like, um... A lot of majors will require you to have volunteer hours or you go to certain jobs and they want you to have them. Um, so you can always use those as something else to do to get you out of the house. But be involved in something. You need social interaction, whether you're introvert, extrovert. You need social interaction. And you need people who are like-minded who are trying to get to the same thing as you. So use your voice, go to events, and make friends. <laughs> um, and also maybe having free food, drinks, prizes, all types of stuff. You go eat. And you're going to eat decent for free. Alright. The next thing is choose the classes that fit your normal schedule. Listen, that thing had me blown. Because what I was trying to do is I was trying to pick classes that would make me have a schedule. And that was a fail. That, that was a no. No. Should have never did that. Listen. So, me, I usually wake up maybe like 10, 11 on a normal day. If I just, if my body just makes me wake up, it's about 10, 11. I was taking classes that were trying to have me in a class at 7, at 8 a.m. When I tell you, I hit that snooze so quick and just... Yeah, I was so over class at this point. Like, I was so over class. And also, like, at UF, it rains in the afternoon, especially in the summer around, like, 1, 2 in the afternoon. It's pouring. I ain't want to be out for that. But also, you sometimes you got to take it out. You got to get you some rain boots, buckle up, because you're not making it to that 7 a.m. class. So don't try to make it something that you are, because you're not. You're not. At most college, they have, like, afternoon classes, too, or, like, evening ones. I have one that was, like, at, like, 5 p.m., I believe, on some days, my lab. So it doesn't always have to be early in the morning. They also have stuff that can fit your schedule later on in the day. Dress how you want. Because when you get to college, everybody's not going to be dressed up Prada, Dior, Louis. Most, if they do, most of the time it's fake. Like, or they scholarship or they grant paid for it. Don't be out here trying to flex with these people 
don't. Your teacher could care less what you wear. It's not high school. You can come to class and put your as long as your grades good. Honestly, they don't even care if your grades good. Come to class how you want. Just don't be, you know, a little bit too provocative. But come to class how you want, child. Be comfy. You gotta sit in there for an hour or two out your day every single day. Girl, be comfy. Go to class. Do your little do. Do your work. Go home. Stay close to home if you have the option. So many people told me this and I was like, yeah, I'm so ready to go. <laughs> I'm so ready to get out of my mama's house. But stay close to home if you have the option because it will save you so much money. I could have had so much more money saved and a lot more financially going for me if I had stayed back home. Just because I'm not paying for food, I'm not paying for transportation. My folks is right here. I'm not paying a bill. I probably would have helped with the bill. <laughs> but I'm saying if your parents ain't going to make it, you ain't got to pay for the bill. You ain't got to worry about doing an extra job. Like It saves so much extra stress and money if you don't have to worry about that. So if you can stay back home, like if your mental is is there enough to stay back home, stay back home. Take your little classes. One, two, three, get out. You, by the time you had a degree, you have a couple thousand saved. Out, first apartment, you sit. You work study if possible. I know only certain people are eligible because I wasn't eligible. Uh, but if you can do work study, it's basically allowing you to literally <laughs> work and study at the same time. So you get paid, but I know a lot of the study halls, libraries, um, a lot of them will allow you to do it. Basically, you're just checking people in and out and then answering questions if people have questions. But it's fairly simple and it's an easy way to make some passive income without you having to go crazy and actually physically work. But yeah. That's all that I have for you guys. I just want to give you guys a little rundown of things that would have definitely been beneficial to me. And hopefully it will be beneficial to you if you're going to college soon. But if there's nothing else, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe to the channel. And we out.